All right. Well, we're in Zechariah chapter number 1 tonight. Zechariah chapter number 1. And we're going to be looking at a warning for God's people. We've seen uh, the Lord through the prophet Zechariah gave encouragement to His people in a couple of different ways. Beginning with uh, verse number 1, we saw the encouragement that was given through three names that were given here. And uh, one name meant the Lord remembers, one meant the Lord will bless, and the other was born at a appointed time looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. And we saw also the encouragement of a promise from God there in uh, verse number 2 and 3. And then last week we saw how the greatest need for God's people was for revival. And that revival includes a return to God's ways, God's worship, God's will, and God's word. Now tonight we're going to be in verses 4 through 6. And I want us to see a warning that Zechariah gives uh, from the Lord to his people, a warning for God's people. Verse number 4, Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words... And my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. And so we see here a, the warning not to repeat history there in verse number 4. Um, he would tell them, be, be not like your fathers. Don't be like your fathers. And uh, some, George Santayana said these words. He says, those who disregard the past are bound to repeat it. And then uh, uh, another quotation from Pillar in the Coronet uh, says, the worst thing about history is that every time it repeats itself, the price goes up. Now, in verse number 2, the Lord had these words for Zechariah and the people of Judah. He said, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Now, that's kind of an understatement, don't you think? The, 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 the Lord was sore displeased. We could call that a simple state, statement of fact. It's the bottom line. It had been the reason that Jerusalem had been destroyed and that they had been carried away into captivity by the Babylonians or the Chaldeans. They've been there for a period of 70 years just as the Lord said they were going to be there for. And in verse number 4, the, the Lord reminded His people here of past occasions when their fathers had been disobedient to Him, had not listened to Him, and instead had committed spiritual adultery. I want us to Hold your place there in Zechariah. We'll be back in just a minute. But I want us to look at uh, several places in the book of Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah chapter number 3 to begin with. So turn to Jeremiah chapter number 3. And we see the warnings of the prophet Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah 3, we're going to begin reading with verse number 6. Jeremiah 3, verse number 6. And it says there, it says, The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high, green mount, every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou not, uh, turn thou unto me, excuse me, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah, which is who we're talking about, Judah, the nation of Judah, saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also." And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, 
but feignedly, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one. Uh, I will take you one of a, a city and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. Now, take a look also at chapter number four and verse number one. It says, "If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove." And then we see down in verse number fourteen, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved, how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Look at chapter number 5, verse number 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say the Lord liveth, Surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they, are not, they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused uh, to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of of their God. Also look down in verse number 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods when I fed them with, to the full. Uh, they, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Now look at verse number 22. Verse number 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of, uh, of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet they, uh, uh, they uh, can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. He says, Your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholden good things from you. Does that sound like they're already under judgment? They were already under judgment. The final judgment had not come, but it was. they were already under judgment. Chapter number 6, verse number 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Look at verse number 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and seek, and, and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, and walk therein, uh, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Uh, therefore, hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. And then uh, take a look also uh, at verse uh, chapter number 7, excuse me, chapter number 7, verse number 23. 
chapter 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk ye in all my ways that I have commanded you, that it be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Uh, but thou, th thou shalt thus say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. I think we can clearly see, uh, if, not, if, if, if they didn't have many, they at least had one prophet that was nailing them, nailing their hide to the wall uh, because they were not what they were supposed to be. And the people of Judah thought that they could just cast aside the words of the prophets. And the problem was they did not believe in the authority of the word of the Lord. Now, when a true prophet would come in to them in the name of the Lord, they rejected the words that he spoke, even though they would come saying, Thus saith the Lord God. And then they would speak the words that the Lord gave them to speak. Now, they had the benefit of knowing what... The result was for their fathers, these that, that, that uh, uh, Zechariah is writing to. They had the benefit of knowing what the Lord had done for casting aside the words of the prophets. Defeat and disaster, we could just call it that. Defeat and disaster came to them. And the Lord's people needed to not only move from their spiritual apathy and return to Him wholeheartedly, but they needed to move at this point beyond their despair over the pressures from their enemies. They had some enemies that were oppressing them as they were back in the land. And uh, they needed to move beyond that, and they needed also to move beyond their discouragement about the smaller scale of the temple. And if you want to read about that, you can go back to the prophet Haggai. He, he uh, dealt with that in his writings, which he was uh, contemporary with Zechariah there. But the despair and discouragement could be and would be dealt with if they first returned to the Lord wholeheartedly. And as they returned to the Lord, uh, He would return to them and help them with their problems. And that's, that's, that, that is true even today. If folks will return to the Lord, the Lord will help them through their problems. Um, next we see that God doesn't speak uh, about the terrible punishments that came upon His people, but... He talks about their mortality. Um, we see two sobering questions that are asked there in verse number 5. It says, Your fathers, where are they? There's the first question. And the prophets, do they live forever? Let's take the first question. Your fathers, where are they? What kind of legacy did they leave behind? What had their unbelief and rebellion brought them in the end? They were displaced out of their land and died in captivity because of their sins. One of the worst things that can happen in a person's life is for them to suffer loss and then die as a result of wicked rebellion in their life. And uh, history is full of folks who have done that. We, you, we can look uh, at the rebels of the past, whether we want to talk about Pharaoh or Ahab and Jezebel or Herod the Great. There's all kinds of mockers and tyrants and, and atheists of world history who exalted themselves uh, while raging against the Lord and His anointed in the past. And what did it accomplish for them? Where are they? Well, they died. And they entered eternity in their unbelief and wicked rebellion against God. But God and His Word continue. What God spoke and what God said, this, you deliver my word, this is what's going to take place. Guess what? It took place. <laughs> and that, that that has not taken place, can I assure you that it is going to take place one day 
There are some things that, that uh, were prophesied that deal with the end times, and we are on the first hold of that. And God will ultimately, uh, we know that these rebels that died in their sin, uh, God and His Word continue, but God will ultimately judge the rebels and He will abide for all eternity as they are cast into the lake of fire. Now, what counts is what remains at the end of our lives. What's going to remain at the end of your life? Let me ask you, what kind of legacy did your forefathers leave you? If it was the legacy of love for the Lord and His Word, well, you ought to praise the Lord for that and continue in that legacy and make it a lasting legacy. And we just really ought to. Amen. I, I thank God for the legacy that my parents left me. If it was a legacy of disdain for the Lord, and sadly some of you may have had parents that didn't love the Lord and didn't live for the Lord, if it was a legacy of disdain for the Lord and His Word, or even if it was a legacy of apathy. Somebody said, well, you know, I just don't really care about the Lord, don't care about the things of the Lord. Well, you need to learn from the past and move beyond what your fathers did. If your grandparents and or grandparents dropped the ball, uh, don't repeat history. Look at it, where it got there, uh, them, you know, we learn from it, amen? Uh, oh, how we need to establish a godly legacy. We need to pray to the Lord that it will be a lasting legacy to our children and to our grandchildren. We can't choose how our children and grandchildren will live their lives. Now I wish we could, but we can't. But listen, the legacy that we leave ought to be such that if our children and grandchildren choose to follow the same path that we took, that it will go well with them. Amen? That's the kind of legacy we, we ought to seek to leave. Now, let's take a look at the, the second question there in verse number 5. It says, And the prophets, do they live forever? <laughs> now, with, with these words, the Lord was surely saying that His servants were also buried. You know, uh, But His work was continuing. And His word continued. His work and His word. The prophets proclaimed the truth. And many of them died in service, and yet the truth remains. Uh, what comes to mind, whenever I was studying for this, it came to mind what it says about uh, Abel uh, in the book of Hebrews. He being dead, yet liveth. Amen. That, that, that's the kind of legacy I want to leave. I might be out of here, but I want to leave one behind that... that, that that the legacy remains, the, the truth of God's Word remains. The, the prophets proclaimed the truth. They died in service, yet the truth remains. This preacher, talk about myself, I, I'm not going to live forever on this earth, but when I'm dead and gone, truth of God's Word will remain. God, God is true. And the Word of God is a lasting legacy. Now, the third thing I want us to see tonight, we see the reality and realization of God's Word there in verse 6. He says, But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? What's the answer? Uh-huh, they did. Very much so, right? Everything that God said was going to happen to them happened. In fact, they had to, when they were in the land... Uh, it says that they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Now, we know that some did not believe. They died and perished in their unbelief, leaving a trail that speaks of the fruit of that rebellion brings. It brings forth chastisement and judgment. We know that, don't we? Nobody has to tell us that. But listen, others believed, and they died too, but they remain in eternity in, uh, in their person and in uh, the work that they accomplished through the Lord. Now, now, understand that nothing that is done in obedience to the Lord is ever wasted. Now, I'm going to say that again, okay, because it's real important that you grab a hold of that. Nothing that is done in obedience to the Lord is ever wasted. Now, we may sometimes hesitate to do good because we don't see any results. You ever tried to do good for somebody and it just seemed like it 
turned over on its head and then nothing came out of it well. Uh, we may feel that if we're, we're spinning our spiritual wheels in the world uh, that's full of mud, you know, um, we, we feel like we're getting bogged down, not getting anywhere, but, but that's if we look at things from a worldly perspective. And that's not what we're to do, is it? We don't look from a worldly perspective. If we maintain a heavenly perspective, we will understand that we don't always see the good that results from our efforts. We're not going to see it all. But we, we can plant and water. We, we may never see the increase in our lifetime. And that's because we can't see the hearts of men. Tonight, I don't know what God's doing in your heart tonight. I see your face. I see you know. You see you sitting there, but I don't know what God's doing in your heart. There are things that go on, go on in folks' hearts and lives that, that uh, we can affect in a positive way if we stay faithful to God yeah. um, and let God use us. But and I'm talking about we we. We can affect them in a positive way if we stay faithful, but not if we quit. Listen, we can affect folks either positively or negatively, which is it going to be for us. We all touch the lives of people around us, don't we? In one way or another. Are you touching them in a positive way for the Lord, or is it a negative way? Do we truly believe that Christ has won the ultimate victory? We know the Scripture tells us He has. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, thanks for the, the, uh, to the resurrection. We know that the victory is ours. Do we really truly believe that? Well then, if we do, let's let it affect the way that we live right now. Let's not let our discouragement over a perceived lack of results or even discouragement over our perceived inadequacies keep us from doing and being what the Lord has called us to do and be. Yeah. He said, well, you know, I just don't think I can, I'm, not, I'm just not very good. Well, let the Lord be good through you. Okay. Let the Lord do His work through you. It's not supposed to be us doing, it's supposed to be the Lord working in our lives and us uh, saying, yes, Lord, uh, you, you, you commanded me to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do and be what you want me to be, even though I, I may lack the skills or I may lack the, the uh, uh, enthusiasm that uh, you know, we, we, we can be enthusiastic uh, even if we are not originally enthusiastic. We can get enthusiastic about the things of what God is going to do uh, even though we may not in our hearts think uh, we're going to be, be very good at it. The, the Lord can do it, make up for our inadequacies is what I'm saying. Our perceived inadequacies are many times just that. I mean, I could have, I could have argued with the Lord when He was calling me to preach. Uh, man, I mean, the last thing I wanted to do was stand up before people and talk. I mean, I just, that just was not me. It just wasn't me in any way. If you'd have known me growing up, you'd have known that that was the case. I, being a public speaker was just uh, mm, no go. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But then the Lord. What you going to do? Tell the Lord no? Huh? And that wouldn't work out well. I knew that. The way the Lord was working in my heart, I knew what He wanted me to do. I mean, when your preacher is preaching and and the, and the, the the Lord is opening up the Word of God and you just you come up with your own message while he's preaching at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, boy, get get a clue, get a clue. Uh, where are you going to preach that at? Uh, I'm calling you. What we need to do is realize that we're just like the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians fifteen ten. He said, but. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Look to the grace of God working in your life. Let God's grace work in you and through you. Amen? Uh, 
and it will be a positive effect on those around you. Let's obey God right now, realizing that what we do in obedience to the Lord, it will have eternal results. We can't see the results now, but when we stand before the Lord one day, man, the, the people that we've impacted, we're going to see it, and we're going to know it. We'll know it then. Um, we may not see any of it right now, but uh, let's obey God right now, realizing that what we do in obedience to the Lord will have eternal results. It both can and will affect our lives and the lives of others for all eternity. It's going to affect you eternally and those that you touch. It's going to affect them eternally. Think about that. Eternity, eternity is a long time. These Jews who returned to Jerusalem from the Babylonian captivity needed to recognize this. And they needed to turn wholeheartedly to the Lord. No, don't, be like your, don't be like your fathers were. You see where it got them. You see the, what the prophets had to say and how it came true. And your fathers had to acknowledge that it came true. And where, where are they? Hey, they, they're all gone, but the Word of God's still here. The Word of God's still here. And in the same way, we need to recognize this and turn wholeheartedly to our Lord. Amen? We, we too will all experience death or, or the rapture. I'm, I'm voting for the, the last. The Lord gives me a part of the vote in that. You know, I'd like to go out with the rapture. That would be possible. But our trust is in God. Either way it goes. Amen? I'm not scared to die. In fact, I tell my, tell my doctor, you know, he tries to get me to do things that I, I really don't want to do. Um, and uh, I say, you know, I'm not afraid of dying. I tell him that. So I know where I'm headed. I know what I got on the other side. and It don't scare me none. What scares me is what you're trying to get me to do. <laughs> and uh, Amen. That's right. And so um, uh, we know that we're, gonna, we're all going to experience death. You can do everything right. You, you can get all the, all the vaccinations and you can uh, to follow the protocols and all that. And guess what? You're still going to die. Uh, you'd be walking on the sidewalk and a Coca-Cola truck come up on the sidewalk and squish you like a bug. Just could. Just could happen. You, we don't know how we're going to go, do we? The important thing is, are you ready to go? Uh, you got to know the Lord to be ready to go. We're going to experience death or the rapture, but our, but our trust in God, our devotion to Christ, and our service to Him, listen, that's going to remain for all eternity. Nobody can take, you, take away from you that which is eternal. Uh, Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, after he, after he talked about how uh, that uh, we got the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, you know, based on that, you need to be, he said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be the steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You labor and you labor and you labor and you think, boy, man, it just doesn't seem like I'm getting anything done. But you're being obedient, right? right? And if you're being obedient, that's what counts. Be obedient to the Lord. We can't, uh, we can't make, manufacture the results. No. No. Holy Spirit's job is to work in hearts. Uh, it's God's job to work uh, on the other side. It's ours to be just be obedient to Him. Amen. A warning for God's people. Let's heed the warning. There's those that have come before us. Um, they're not around, but the Word of God remains forever. Amen. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we just thank you tonight for your your blessings in our life. We thank you for uh, the Word of God. We thank you for the prophets of old who spoke the words, who faithfully delivered the words. And many of the words that they've delivered, they, uh, some of those prophecies took place during their lifetime, some of them after their lifetime, and some of them are still yet to come. 
All they could see is they saw the mountaintops of the of the things that were going to be happening. They didn't know the they didn't know the timing. The timing is in your your hands. And Lord, we know that uh, we await your return, and, but we we see it in, from Scripture. We we believe of what the prophets have written. We believe the Word of God, what you have left for us. Lord, help us not get discouraged in this day in which we live. It's so easy to get discouraged. Uh, Lord, help us to stay, keep ourselves encouraged in you and to stay busy doing what you've commanded us to do. Uh, busy about your will until you come, knowing that as you, what you have said is going to be accomplished. And when we stand before you, we'll be glad that we were obedient. We'll be glad that we listened to your word and said, you know, I'm going to do that because that's the word of God. Help us to embrace the word in our own individual lives and cling to the, to the truth of Scripture. Just have your way in our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's